for because they pretty much are just inferior versions of the of some other exercises which you could do. So everyone, this is Dimitri, and today I'm going to be discussing my experience with the Brick 20 exercises. I've completed a whole mesocycle of training uh, with those exercises, and uh, I think that gives me some credibility for discussing them uh, as a person who has experienced them on his own skin. But before we get into that, please like the video and subscribe and leave a comment for the algorithm. Now let's get started. Before we get into the actual breakdown, I'm just going to mention that uh, you can uh, watch all of my videos breaking down each day individually. Uh, and I'm going to be putting cards uh, in the top right corner. So if you're interested as for set progression, uh, rep schemes, etc., please go ahead and watch those. Now, let's get actually started. Firstly, I'm going to talk a bit about my split. I was doing five days a week. Uh, three days, then uh, a rest day, then two days, then a rest again. And so basically I needed to hit my whole body in three days and then in two days. The first three day block uh, consisted of uh, day one, which was chest and shoulders, and day two, which was legs, and day three, uh, when I hit back and arms. The first chest and shoulders day uh, starts off with a superset. Uh, where I hit my chest and my rear delts with a flat dumbbell press and a standing reverse cable fly. Uh, the flat dumbbell press is a good basic exercise. There's not much to be said here, so I'm just gonna skip over to the uh, rear deltoid exercise. And that's a pretty good exercise which I've kept into my next mesocycle. Uh, it's something that you know, I encourage you to try. Although, uh, when designing my next motorcycle, I've moved away from using supersets at all uh, because they are quite cumbersome and uh, you may run into issues where uh, the cable machine or whatever machine you're using uh, is going to be uh, occupied by someone else. Uh, it really is just quite cumbersome to uh, match up your rest and uh, work times with that, uh, that person. But if you have your own gym, feel free to do as many separate sets as you like. You probably won't be missing out on uh, the gains, but you will be saving a lot, a lot of time. Also, this is a pattern uh, which you're going to see quite a bit in my uh, first meta cycle, and that is uh, agonist antagonist training, in particular doing antagonistic supersets. Doug says that this kind of training is superior to regular training because uh, it allows you to recover uh, quite a bit better between the sets, which is true, but also uh, it's going to draw away the metabolites which you accumulate throughout the sets. So it's probably pretty much the same as doing, for example, chest and then chest again, then doing chest, then rear delts, then chest again. So wait, anyway, moving into the next exercise, it's a super incline dumbbell press, which is a good exercise. I encourage you to try it, it's really good for your front delts. Uh, you can also try doing it on a flat bench, uh, it's just up to you. Uh, whichever uh, variation you prefer and whichever feels best. You are not going to be able to use a whole lot of weight on this exercise, uh, so just be mindful of that and start out low. The next exercise is a cable side lateral, uh, going through about an 80 degree range of motion. It's a pretty good exercise, so I'm not going to be going too deep into this. Uh, feel free to add it to your routine. Uh, the next exercises are a superset again, and it's for the mid traps and traps. I've made a video on this exact superset already, so I'm not going to be going too deep into this again. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say is that I don't do cable scapular retractions anymore, because I do more compound rows. Uh, uh, in my current mesocycle, so I've moved away from that exercise entirely. And this is a thing that I've done quite a lot, and it is just remove certain exercises because they just eat up too much time. By the end of the, my training with the Brick 20 in this mesocycle, I've been spending about two to even three hours in the gym uh, at some points, which is just kind of ridiculous. I have a lot of free time, but even then, not that much. 
So moving on, the next exercise is for the amps. It's a slant board crunch. Uh, not much to be said here. Really good variation, something to try. You can overload it quite easily uh, by using uh, dumbbells or you can even use a barbell if you are if you have a decline band press uh, set up. All right, so that's the first day done. Uh, the next day is a leg day, starting off with a cis squat, which is an exercise I've had fun doing. It's a uh, pretty decent exercise, really comparable to a leg extension, uh, which is what I've replaced it with in my next uh, uh, mesocycle of training. Uh, just because of the uh, better loadability, better stability on that exercise, uh, is, the leg extension is just superior in my opinion. Uh, but but you uh, not like a CC squat doesn't have its place. Uh, you can use that exercise if the uh, leg extension machine in your gym sucks, or if you don't have it, it's a pretty good substitution. Then I'm moving on to a superset. Uh, of a seated leg curl and a cable squat. The seated leg curl, not much to be said here, uh, a really basic uh, exercise for your hamstrings. Pretty much everyone has them uh, in their program. Moving on to a cable squat. And this is an exercise that I've had uh, quite a lot of trouble uh, adjusting to. Maybe I'm missing something in the uh, execution of the exercise, but uh, I just haven't set, had success with it and if you want to hear my thoughts on it, uh, diving a bit deeper into the issues with the exercise, you can watch my video and I'll put the card up uh, in the top right corner. The next exercise is supposed to be hitting the glutes and at first I wanted to uh, use the multi-hip machine like Doug recommends, but again I just haven't had success with it. Uh, maybe the machine at my gym sucks, maybe it's just my proportions and I couldn't set it up properly. It really, I really haven't had success with it and uh, I couldn't feel it uh, in my glutes all that much. Uh, I didn't get sore from it, so it just had a really crappy stimulus in my opinion. And I've tried using different weights, uh, lower, higher, uh, different trap ranges. It, just didn't work out for me. So I substituted it for a 45 degree back raise, uh, which I've talked about in my uh, more proper uh, breakdown of the uh, leg day, uh, which I'll pull up a card for in the top right corner. Moving on, uh, I hit two kind of an accessory uh, exercises, uh, and it's the adductors and calves. First about the adductors, it's just uh, doing the adductor machine, uh, not much to be said here, but uh, if you are going to be doing the break 20 exclusively, and you're not going to be squatting or sumo squatting or sumo deadlifting, which would hit your adductors a whole bunch, uh, you might want to add the adductor machine because uh, the break 20 really lack in that department. As for calves, you can do pretty much whatever uh, you want as long as you uh, keep up the proper tempo of, of the reps uh, and I can stress that enough. Uh, pretty much nobody trains the calves right uh, and you're supposed to be training them just about as any other muscle which is slower on, uh, on the eccentric, faster on the concentric, uh, not much bouncing because the, the Achilles tendon is really really powerful in that. It provides you with a lot of uh, this bouncing power so you can move a whole lot of weight without getting much of the stimulus for the calves. The next day is a short day. It's uh, day three, hits back and arms. Uh, the first exercise is a pull-in. The only exercise the dog has that rates 10, in his opinion. It's a pretty decent exercise and uh, I've had great pumps with it. Uh, great mind-muscle connection. I generally do really like unilateral uh, uh, movements for the lats, uh, but it does have its drawbacks in that it doesn't provide a whole lot of stretch uh, for the lats, which is a major comp a contributing factor for hypertrophy. Uh, so I'm going to be making a video on the what I call a modified pull-in to accentuate that stretch. So stay tuned for that. It's an exercise that I really enjoy. 
and I hope you will try it as well. Next up is a superset for the triceps and biceps. Uh, first up is the decline easy bar skull crushers, which you, if you want to do the brick 20, you probably want to substitute them for uh, dumbbell skull crushers, but I've just kept them uh, to uh, keep up the progressive overload and not to be switching out exercises uh, mid mesocycle, which is just generally a bad idea. Next up is a hammer curl. Again, a really basic exercise and a really effective one at that. But from what I learned in the uh, past few months, uh, if you're not specializing in your arms in the current mesocycle and you're only doing like two different exercises for your biceps, you probably don't want to be doing uh, hammer curls or even uh, pronated curls just because of the simple fact that you're not going to be presenting as much of a stimulus to the actual biceps and the brachioradialis is going to be working a lot in your pull-ins. So just something to keep in mind, you might want to do uh, supinated curls uh, if you only have space for uh, two exercises or so for your bias. Next up are two exercises I've removed straight up. Uh, and completely uh, from my routine. It's a wrist curl and a uh, dumbbell external rotation. These two exercises are like the uh, adductor machine exercise I've added on day two uh, and it's something to uh, add where the break 20 lacks. Uh, so uh, since there's not a whole lot of uh, deadlifting or uh, barbell rowing or whatever else, where you will need uh, grip strength and uh, which will provide stimulus for your forearms to grow. Uh, I've added in a wrist curl so as to not miss out on those gains. Because of the lack of uh, heavy barbell uh, bench pressing or overhead pressing, I've added in a dumbbell external rotation as well. So if you do the aforementioned exercises, you don't need to include these, but if you're going to be doing solely the brick 20 uh, you might want to consider it in those so that's the first block uh, of training in the week done i've hit my body once and now i'm going to be taking a rest day uh, to let it recover before hitting every muscle in the body again so the next day is really really similar to uh, the first day and again it's a uh, chest and shoulders uh, except uh, using quite different exercises now the first up again is a superset for chest and rear delts. The first exercise is a uh, one-handed decline cable press, which I've substituted later on for a uh, two-hand decline cable press because I, I've gained access to a free motion machine at the new gym. This is a really, really good exercise for your pecs. Uh, not going to be hitting a whole lot of clavicular fibers, but uh, this is okay because you're going to be hitting them in other movements. Uh, just a really good exercise that, which I've kept into my next metacycle training. The next exercise is a reverse cable fly one-handed and bent over. It's again a really basic exercise, not much setup is required. A lot of people are familiar with it, so I'm not going to be delving too deep into this. What you're going to be noticing here is this day has the same structure as day one, but with different exercises. And I'm going to be having uh, pretty much all of the exercises on this day done on the cable machine. The next exercise is a, for the front delts. Uh, it's a front cable press. If you don't have a free motion machine, you can only uh, do it one-handed, which is certainly a drawback. And even if you have a free motion machine, the setup is still quite wonky because you have to bring the bench to the machine, uh, take up a lot of space, set it up at the right height, uh, make sure that the cable doesn't hit uh, the bench by itself and doesn't uh, dangle somewhere. Uh, it really is just uh, quite cumbersome, but it does feel great. So it's up to you whether you want to do it. Uh, just have these drawbacks in mind. Next up is pretty much a repeat of the first day with a cable side lateral, cable scapular retractions and cable shrug-ins. The only thing I change is uh, the rep range. Uh, and I'm hitting uh, a bit uh, higher reps on this day. And then the last exercise for this day is a seated back extension, which is just a really good exercise for uh, developing your spinal erectors. And it's not something that you see often. 
it really does fry your lower back so uh, give it a try easiest way to set it up uh, that i found is instead of using a dumbbell like doug does which you can just try of, uh, if it works for you then it works for you but what i found is using a zercher grip uh, and uh, doing it with a barbell it is just really really easy and it's easy to progressively overload as well because you can just slap on some plates onto the barbell and do the exercise all right and if you're still here we're almost done uh the next day basically combines the day two and day three uh into a single entity and it results in the back arms and leg day the first exercise is an assisted pull-up i really just wanted to add in some variety and add in a bit more of the bicep volume uh, into my training if you're dead set on set, uh, doing the brick 20 then feel free to do the pull in again but i've just settled on a an assisted pull up next up is a uh, superset for triceps and biceps again uh, but using different exercises a modified tricep pushdown which is just a really really good exercise but again it struggles with the setup it's quite cumbersome so i i didn't keep it in my training also because i don't have a, a free motion machine anymore next exercise is a cable curl again fairly basic exercise not much to explain here just a, a really good solid basic exercise we're going to be hitting the upper legs with a superset of a leg extension and a seated leg curl again uh, not much to be said here again uh, very basic uh, uh, most people are familiar with these exercises with my current knowledge and with the hindsight i would probably uh, switch out the seated leg curl for the line leg curl version uh, for the sake of variety and i really don't think the line version is that much worse than the seated leg curl version uh, as Doug says, as long as the machine is uh, structured properly and you do have some elevation at the hip joint uh, because uh, if you were lying flat and doing the seated leg curls then you would really uh, feel that rack firm stretch and limit the uh, force protection in your hamstrings but most machines do have that hip elevation and it's just not much of an issue Next up is an exercise which hits the glutes and it's a step back lunge. It's an exercise which I thoroughly enjoy uh, because you can use quite uh, light weights comparatively to something like a deadlift for uh, your glutes. But it really does allow you to hit them very very well. Uh, the way I do this exercise is I usually do one leg, then I rest 30 seconds, then I do another leg, then I rest 30 seconds. Then I do uh, the first leg, 30 seconds, second leg, and so on and so on and so on. The reason why I do it this way is because of the cardiovascular endurance limitations. If you don't have trouble alternating your legs, well, then feel free to do that, but I just sort of gas out. And the last exercise is machine calves. Again, just a really basic exercise, not much to explain here, as long as you uh, follow the principles which I have, to have described uh, in my day two then you're going to be golden you're going to be building your calves and it's going to be great all right so summing up I have generally had a fairly positive experience with the brick 20 some exercises I have kept as they are some exercises I have modified and some I have uh, moved out completely uh, which would uh, pretty much be the sissy squat and the cable squat for because they pretty much are just inferior versions of the of some other exercises which you could do uh, to achieve the same goal so i hope this video was helpful if you have any kind of comments please leave, leave them in the comments down below and i'll answer them as usual again like the video if you liked it uh, like the video if you disliked it uh, subscribe comment for the algorithm and i'll see you later see ya because they pretty much are just inferior versions of the of some other exercises which you could do uh, 